Welcome back to Morgan's video blog with writing tips from the pros and of course my own writerly musings. Today I'm here with AuthorTube best practices. Now for those of you who don't know, AuthorTube is a hashtag for writers talking about writing and sometimes even actually writing in video format online, either recorded or live streamed. Now that I'm well into my fourth, almost fifth year of blo video blogging or vlogging and three years into finding the AuthorTube community, I thought I'd share a few quote unquote best practices. Now it being me, these are more tips for being a welcome member of the community than really a how to double your audience weekly sort of post because I'm here about connecting with people, not artificially inflating my numbers. I've done a few of those follow circles and... <sighs> anyway, so for those of you who aren't familiar, I share my weekly blog post in video format, like right now, on my YouTube channel, just me talking to the camera, pretty much reading my blog post as I share my writing tips from the pros and my writerly musings. And then on Sunday afternoons, I do the opposite of a scripted thing. I host productivity sprints while hanging out with a couple of friends, usually Sako Tumi and Doc Coleman. We chat for a while, maybe 20, 30 minutes, and then we do productivity sprints, usually writing or editing for on and off uh, for about two hours. In 2021, I did 21 minute sprints in 2022, 22 minute sprints because I'm easily amused and 20 to 25 minutes works best for me. Uh, and while the video posts are typically only on YouTube, the live streams are on both Twitch and YouTube uh, at youtube.com slash Morgan Hazelwood or twitch.tv slash Morgan Hazelwood. Very surprising there. So anyway, now that you have the context about what it is I'm even talking about and why I feel I might be vaguely qualified to talk about it, let's talk about the five best practices for author tubers. Number one, consistent style. Now different people are looking for different things. Some people are here for my con panel write-ups and some prefer my getting real writing updates. Some like my writerly musings, and some of you are here for all of my writer adjacent stuff I talk about, like this. But I have a theme, writing, and a tone, and I lean into it while staying authentic to myself. This is me, people. Um, my live streams have a certain rhythm to them, and when you're hanging out live, having an expected rhythm, even if your rhythm is to expect the unexpected, helps you connect with an audience. Use the hashtags that match you, your content best, but do know that YouTube ignores all tags if you use more than 15. Uh, so how do you pick this style? What, how you're gonna present yourself? Well, watch other author tubers, see what they do, the different styles, the different attitudes, and adapt the ones that work for you. Now, don't I'm not saying steal somebody's unique thing, but use their ideas as inspiration. You're a writer. You, you know how to do, um, you know, individuality. So number two best practice, a regular schedule. As with any social media platform, a regular posting schedule helps you find an audience and lets people be able to and post it so people can find out what this schedule is. I've noticed obvious drop-offs in my live stream viewership even if I miss a single week, so regularity is key. That said, when you were watching those author tubers to see what you liked and find out when they are live streaming and don't schedule when they're live, first it's hard to get an audience if you're competing with a popular streamer in the same subgenre. And secondly, it's just not very neighborly. However, I do acknowledge there are enough streamers that someone is almost always streaming. So try to find a time that you can stream regularly 
and isn't competing with someone with a similar vibe to what you expect to use. Number three best practices for author tubers, be a considerate guest. As with blogging, being a guest on someone else's platform can be a great way to reach a broader audience or having a guest with a broad audience on your platform. If you come across in interesting ways, you can add to your own following. For me, I like to have watched the author tubers first so I know what I'm getting into, just their attitudes and just the general flow. I come in and do my best to contribute to the conversation without talking over the regulars. Unless it's an interview, it's not about me. I'm there because I love the writing community and getting to talk shop with people who get it. Plus, maybe some productivity in there if there are writing sprints. I'm not there to necessarily promo myself, although there is that aspect. I do confirm the scheduled time and the link that we're going to use to meet up ahead of time and I try to make sure that I've tested my camera and my sound. I do this when um, participating in convention panels online as well, so you know, there's, there's just ways to be professional about it. I am also aware when I join someone's live stream or a panel that I am new and a guest. In jokes and joking insults between longtime friends are very different things than quote unquote joking insults from a new acquaintance. While I want to fit in, I try not to fake a familiarity that doesn't exist, that can only be built through time. While a good host will link your channel, when you're a guest, telling watchers to subscribe to channels or social media platforms other than the AuthorTube channel you're on is kind of a sign of disrespect. It's fine during the introduction or at the end if you're asked to invite it to tell the viewers where they can find you, but other than that, you are there to create content, not just promo yourself. Now, if it's an interview, it's a little different, but there are still obvious times to insert plug, not the entire time you're talking. Um, yeah, this, this really also applies to panel discussions at conventions. So while I do admit that some people appeal to the drama llama in the audience when they're, you know, a guest, uh, the other tube community is small, so think about it before burning bridges. That said, if you see bad behavior, calling it out is always appropriate. Number four of best author two practices, collaborate. Stop, collaborate. Now, you might meet someone you'd like to collaborate with on social media, in your comment section, or in person. Should you invite someone to collaborate, let them know what sort of collaboration you're looking for, negotiate a start and end time, and be timely yourself. For YouTube, a preview image and blurb will often be pre-created. Be sure to have a profile picture and your links handy to share. If you're the guest um, and if you're hosting, ask for them a few days in advance if you're going to use them. Note, when reaching out, be conscientious if your usernames are not consistent across platforms and be sure to contextualize and or link your platform during discussion. The number of times I've had someone chat in my DMs and I have no clue what platform or group they're coming from is probably weekly. So, and best practice number five, join the community. Shouting into the void isn't great for one's ego, but it can give you time to work on your technology and figure out your style, but when you're done with that, it is time to join the community. Uh, one way to do it is you can join the groups on your favorite social media platform. I know where the Facebook and the Reddit one is and some of the bajillion Discord servers. Why does everyone need their own? Um, 
Secondly, you can search hashtag writers on Twitch or YouTube, watch the videos or the streamers, and then follow your favorites. Um, thirdly, join their comment sections by commenting about their content, not promoting your own stuff, but set up an account such that if your name is clicked, it links back to your account. Um, Another tip is if you are stuck for content as part of the community, think about participating in some of the AuthorTube tags. Hashtag AuthorTube newbie, NaNoWriMo, Camp Nano, Vlogmas, Preptober, and whatever the tag of the month is. I'm, I'm not great at tags, people. Um, they typically have a topic and sometimes a list of questions to answer and you can always create your own and then tag people to do the challenge or whatever. Um, they're usually uh, about you, your writing, or what you've been reading. There is decent crossover with the hashtag booktuber uh, community. Most of us loved reading books before we started to write. And finally, support and review author tuber books if they sound up your alley. I'm not suggesting you read everything because not everything is for you, but if an author tuber's book is something you would normally read, do so and give them a review because that's what the algorithm's like and that's a great way to support your fellow author tubers. Reading something that isn't your jam isn't going to make you want to give them a high star review and that's not helpful for anyone. Um, so anyway, those are the five best practices. Let me know if there's anything I missed in the comments below. And as always, thank you for tuning in. And I'll be back again next week with more writing tips and writerly musings. Bye-bye.